Hello and welcome to the 2019 E3 Ubisoft presentation, conference, whatever they're going to call it. I'm Chris, this is Massive Score. The audio is currently muted because it's just music and people, it's like clips of live streams or YouTube videos and stuff. Yeah, in this introduction, I'll be unmuted as soon as the conference actually starts. Then we'll, uh, we'll go into it. I'm just channeling all my power into either a new Prince of Persia, which is probably impossible, or a new Splinter Cell, which I think is possible, but not likely. That's where I'm at. But we'll see what happens. So it's about an hour long conference. Maybe a little less than an hour, but pretty close. Are they like, I don't know. It's almost time. 20 seconds. Well, 35. Got to go by their timer, I guess. I turned off low latency mode just so that there would be a little better uh, connection since I had trouble earlier. Okay, I will unmute you when you shut up. Alright, here we go. I assume this is the beginning of the conference. Are they going to start with Just Dance again? Ooh. This is like the same stage, too. Like it might be the same stage as last time. <clears throat> Assassin's Creed Symphony. What a weird game. What's up with my eye? This is a good time though. The thing is like... I wouldn't say Assassin's Creed has bad music, but I don't think Assassin's Creed has memorable music. 
So... I have no clue if this is a song from one of the games? Or if this is just... Whatever? Yeah, people cheer for Black Flag. We're four minutes into the conference, and the conference hasn't started yet. Like, if this is leading into a new Assassin's Creed game, you know, like how the music went into God of War, really setting the tone, that'd be great. But... That's not what this feels like. This just feels like a celebration of Assassin's Creed, featuring music from the games that you don't quite remember. Took up uh, six minutes, but still pretty cool. This feels like a weird way to use six minutes. Oh, it's a so they're announcing a tour for Assassin's Creed music. Assassin's Creed isn't iconic like Final Fantasy is. I don't think. <clears throat> like a tour of Final Fantasy music that makes sense. Even just Final Fantasy VII. Well, I guess. <sighs> Symphony tour starting on June 29th. It's literally the people from the pre-show. It's kind of weird. The iconic themes from Assassin's Creed while you relive some of the most memorable moments from over a decade of Assassin's Creed in an immersive experience. Check out acsymphony.com to learn more. I mean, excellent music, great performances, goosebumps. If you like those things, I think those shows are going to be for you. But, of course... There's one show that we all came here to see, the Ubisoft E3 conference, and it's just about to start here from the Orpheum Theater. They're literally admitting Angeles. that wasn't it. House is packed. And to give you folks at home an idea of what that feels like, can I please hear the balcony people make some noise? <laughs> now, 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 if you, if you please. If you please, I'd like to do the same for the people sitting on the ground floor. Why are you doing this? Well, the excitement is here, folks. We hope you're feeling the same way there. From everyone at Ubisoft all around the world, please enjoy the show. So now it'll start, and now we get Just Dance. Right? They set a mood with Assassin's Creed Symphony, and then they'll just throw that mood out the window with Just Dance. Or we're just going to... That was Rainbow Six. Ten years of Just Dance. Oh, that was just... 
that was fluff, okay. E3 Conference. World Premiere. World Premiere. London. Greatest city in the oh, world. Oh, Watch Dogs. Dope. Well, used to be. Now it's a right mess. Government's fucked off. Extremists are grabbing power. Organized crime slicing up the boroughs. The war dogs are out. And freedom's a bloody joke. But this ain't their London. This is our London. This is our it's London. Power growing. It's all of us. Together. We're building a resistance. One recruit at a time. So all the leaks were right. What's my favorite operative up to this evening? And no, I never say that to the others. Scouting talent, Bagley. So gob shut, eyes peeled, yeah? I have no eyes, and if I did, I wouldn't peel them. Looks good. But it doesn't look unbelievably good like the first Watch Dogs trailer did. Like, this looks like believably good. Then I recommend you recruit someone who can deal with drones. Brilliant. Never would have thought of that. You're clear. Shut off. Right. Easy. I'm complying. Impressive skill set. Sure, but we need a drone expert, Raj, not a shit kicker. File that one away for later. There's so many opportunities for people you could recruit. Well, now. Jimmy Shaw. No formal engineering training, but he has several mischief charges for hijacking Albion drones. Nice. Fuck you, man. You got no right. Fuck you, now. We find our drone expert and he's about to get himself nicked. I'm dead sick. That dude backflipped from a punch. This is just gameplay, right? Like, Permadeath. Oh, man. Yeah, please. Uh, I used to feed the birds here. Oh, that's... Machines. Get used to it. In the long march of progress, everything dies eventually. This is rad. I get to play as an old lady. <laughs> A little respect. Then let's finish what he started. He was working on a new recruit, a drone expert. That's promising. What do we know about him? Albion scans Jimmy just before Ian was killed. I should be able to predict his next move from that data. Unfortunately, his records are locked up tighter than your compression stockings. Are they now? But this case should be handled by the Met. I... Albion's even taken over Scotland Yard. Complicates matters. And there's my way in. Hello, darling. <laughs> this 
looks fantastic. Time to go. They'll be on to me. <laughs> oh, I want to protect Helen. I don't want Helen to die. Ian can die. But protect Helen. Chop chop. Bagley. Ready for some action, Naomi? Always. But this recruit better be worth all the trouble. According to the Scotland Yard records, Jimmy's sister was killed by Plan Kelly. We believe he's seeking his revenge inside Camden Market. Camden Black Market, you mean? Yes. The Kellys are rumored to run all sorts of illicit goods out of the old stables. Some with fingers and toes. He's gone in there alone. He's in big trouble. The Kellys have this place on full lockdown. Hmm. I have an idea. I don't know if it's really in London, but the phone booths are Wi-Fi hotspots. That's really cool. It's a good, uh, good use of uh, old technology. Just replace it. We'll keep him there. Oh. I can't tell if she's controlling this or if it's... Nah, she's not. Now, Naomi, we've already lost one operative, so try not to get killed or we'll be in the red for the day. Copy that. And the fact that the three people that we've seen so far played differently. Like, obviously, voice acting is a big deal, but having different gameplay for each person you play as there's probably like a set right like there's uh like different characteristics that can get mapped to different people like young people old people maybe kids i don't know if they put kids in this but like hacker weapons expert and then stealth like the naomi here is doing stealth Stables. It's human trafficking. Hooray! I mean, hooray, we're gonna stop them. <laughs> hey, looks like he's doing fine. So, um, how are you gonna get him out of there? Lots of hugs and kisses. Nope, oh, there's Big Ben. In the London Eye. Well, we showed those fucks, didn't we? We almost died out there tonight. Look, thanks for helping me, but I can handle myself. Right. You think you're better off alone. You think everyone else has given up and there's no one to trust. That's what they want you to think. And that's how they'll take us, one at a time. It doesn't have to be that way. Together, we can change things. Wait, what happened to that bloke who helped me? He didn't make it. F 
Fuck it. Welcome to DeadSec, James. Yeah. Okay, so... Where do I go to meet the rest of the crew? You don't need to go anywhere. Look around you. Everyone has a reason to fight, and DeadSec is open to anyone. Anyone? Welcome to the Resistance. This is sick. Fantastic. Really good. A lot of gameplay. Really good. Thank you. Thank you. Guess I'm going to make you all wait so long, I should really knock it out of the park, huh? Uh, I'm Clint Hawking. I'm the creative director of Watch Dogs Legion. And for the past few years, the team and I have had the privilege to work on a game and an innovation that we are very proud of. Watch Dogs Legion is set in London, one of the greatest cities in the world, and it's had a massive influence on all of our culture for centuries. Today, with Brexit, London's at a turning point. It's hard to predict what the future holds for London, for the UK, or for the world. But history has proven time and again that where London goes, all of us go together. In our near future, London is facing her downfall. The UK has become a surveillance state, and freedom has been replaced with fear. Armed drones patrol the streets, deportation squads rip people from their homes, and Grandad is using crypto to buy a new kidney on the black market. But Londoners never surrender. That's supposed Their to be a joke. And determination that felt like a joke. Inspiration to us all, and they are the heroes of our game. All of them. In Watch Dogs Legion, your mission is to build a popular resistance to fight back against the emergence of an authoritarian regime. This means you don't just play as one hero, but many. And in Watch Dogs Legion, you can recruit and play as anyone. <laughs> very, very cool. In our game, every Londoner is fully simulated with a persistent life and relationships, and anyone from the entire population can be recruited into your team. Find them, profile them, hack into their lives, play their origin mission, and win them over to your cause. The heroes you recruit are all unique characters with different backstories and personalities, fully voiced and animated, and they are the stars of your story. Every cinematic in the game will change depending on whether you're playing a former MI5 action hero, a 70-year-old granny you saw feeding pigeons in the park, or anyone in between. However you want to play, whoever you want to be, Watch Dogs Legion lets you be that. You want to make a team of classic British spies? No problem. You want to be a crew of street-savvy kids from the council block? Do it. You want to go hipster, body mod, Afropunk, gangsta? Awesome. <laughs> the women of Bletchley Park? These ladies fucking invented hacking! <laughs> Play as anyone is the innovation that transforms a story about freeing London and the world from the grip of tyranny into a game about the heroes that live in each of us. Because being a hero isn't just a job for someone else anymore. It's a job for everyone. So on behalf of the Watch Dogs Legion's team here and around the world, I hope to see you on the booth. Thank you for your time, and welcome to the resistance. And now we get the uh, CG cinematic trailer. Had a good run there for a while. Good. Now it's all right. So 20 minutes in, and we've only seen one game. But it's a really good game. And people thrown in cages like animals. Oh, I know you can forget the killer robots everywhere. 
So yeah, it's all gonna be shit. <coughs> it's up to us to take our city back. Thing is, we can't do it alone. We need to recruit a resistance. I know what you're thinking. Where do we start? Open your eyes and take a look around. Look here. Look at him. No, not him. Him. Former MI5. Duty never ends. He can get anywhere and erase anyone. See ya. Let's kick those bastards out of London. She got kicked out of Oxbridge Robotics School for teaching him to uh, reproduce. Nice. And that fellow over there? Proper bellend. Come on, come at me. He'll crack your skull just for looking that funny. <laughs> this had better be fucking good. And allow me to introduce you to the deadliest of the lot. She's not old, she's experienced. <laughs> You can recruit anyone, and all mean bloody anyone. Him, her, everyone is a secret weapon. Find them, recruit them, build the resistance. Let's unfuck this world. <laughs> That's a good slogan, if they could use that on the marketing. Which I don't think they can, but you know. March 6, 2020. So the Friday after Final Fantasy 7. Which sounds super weird, but you know. Why are you playing the It's Always Sunny music? Like, I'm sure it's not originally from It's Always Sunny, but like... My name is Rob McElhenney, and oh. for the past 14 years, I've been making a television show called <laughs> It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. That's why. Thank you. But I am here today because I love games. And I wanted to express that love in the only way that I know how save for playing them and that is to make a tv show about them More oh the i'm so excited oh boy last year i called the funniest people that i knew charlie day megan gans and david hornsby all executive producers on sunny and we started talking we realized very early on that if we were going to do this we wanted to do it right and to be as authentic as possible because as you all know nobody smells bullshit like this particular community <laughs> So we did the right thing. We partnered with yes. Ubisoft, and away we went. It has been an incredible experience working with one of the biggest and best game developers in the world to inspire us, because our show takes place in the fictional <laughs> studio. Yeah, Mac is ripped now. It's MMO true. RPG in the world, Mythic Quest, and we meet them on the cusp of releasing their biggest expansion yet, Mythic Quest: Ravens Bank. The show follows the team of devs as they navigate the challenges of running their game while dealing with the difficulties of modern office life. These people are truly stuck together, yet they grind it out day after day for the love of the game. And at the head of that team is my character, creative director, Ian Grimm. Ian? <laughs> Ian? Like most creative directors, he's gifted, driven, and tirelessly dedicated to his game. And like most of the creative directors that I've met, he has an ego the size of a city bus. I'm going to get my ass kicked backstage because there's a lot of creative directors here. Joking aside, it is clear that those creative directors and the thousands of people who work on these games put everything that they can into them. They recognize that they have a tremendous opportunity and responsibility, that they must do everything in their power to ensure that the games are nothing short of the best that they can make. Because that is what the community, you, deserve. I promise you that in making this show, we took the same approach. 
So without further ado, here is a brief <laughs> look into our upcoming TV series for Apple TV Plus, <laughs> Mythic Quest, Raven's Banquet. <laughs> Boy, just the introduction makes me not what care. What is Mythic Quest? <clears throat> say it's just a video game. Unless the twist at the end is that Ubisoft actually makes Mythic Quest. Now played in 20 different countries on six continents, it's the biggest massive multiplayer role-playing game of all time. And today, they find themselves on the precipice of their first major expansion, Mythic Quest Raven's Banquet. And it all falls on the shoulders of one man, creative director Ian Grimm. When we think about cultural touchstones, I don't like that his name's Ian. Star Wars, Avatar, and yet our industry dwarfs the traditional entertainment business. So when we think about legends, why not think Mythic Quest? True indeed. And when we think of visionary world-building artists, instead of just Spielberg, Lucas, and Cameron, why not think... Grimm? I I I'm sorry, I, I gotta stop. What is this? It's a commercial for the game. It's a commercial for you. It's still going. Shh, 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 shh. This is insane. <laughs> uh, I think it's brilliant. <laughs> what a great show that I'll never watch. Probably. Such a So we're now 30 minutes into the conference and we've seen one game. One game in 30 minutes. Hey there, my name is Parker Intero Mackay, esports caster for Rainbow Six Siege. There are so many exciting things to come in year four in game events, map reworks, playlist updates, a roster of 52 unique. Is this just to tell us about the thing that happens in 30 minutes? Starting tomorrow, you'll be able to enjoy our 13th season. Operation Phantom Sight. This major content update brings two new operators to Team Rainbow. Esports. After this show, be sure to stick around for an intense celebrity match starring T Pain, Little Yachty, and some of your favorite Twitch streamers for the Twitch Rivals Celebrity Show Match. No. Right now, here's a glimpse of the new season in action. Thank you, everyone, and have a great E3. Wow, incredible. Rainbow Six is sick. I just. I got behind, and now I feel like I'm too far behind to play it anymore. And this is an old map. This is like an original map, so I don't know what this, uh, what they're showing. Playing as young Stan Lee. what that was supposed to be. Okay, Brawlhalla. Oh, no. yeah. 
tickets are whack. 1v1 me, bro. For real. Uh, yeah. I'll toast your buns again, sure. Want to choose a different character? Yeah, I choose me. Okay. Yeah, woohoo! Brawl Jabraic! Oh, my burrito! <laughs> Whoa! It's those guys from the game! What time is it? Adventure time! I've never seen the show. Do they say that? That it's. it's adv what time is it? It's adventure time? I mean, it's not as hype as like a collaboration with Nintendo, but. All right, something good now, please. Okay, more Ghost Recon's good. The only test of a man's worth is battle. When those rounds come screaming past your head, you're gonna learn if you were hungry enough, <clears throat> hungry enough to take that victory. And we're going to battle with the soldiers that we used to be. Ghosts. And you better believe that they are hungry too. And once upon a time, some of these ghosts, they may have been your friends. And there is brotherhood. But then there is what the world needs. These ghosts, they are the past. They still serve the machine that we left behind. And right now, for the future, the world needs us. I'm honored. I'm honored to be here with you tonight. And as you head into battle, with that mean look in your eye, those bad intentions in your mind, remember this. You are the few with the courage to make history. You have the desire to take victory. You will be on a battlefield full of ghosts, but only you have that hunger. That hunger. I still think the name Breakpoint's kind of weak, but other than that, it's a seems good. Oh, it's him. What's going on, everybody? Hey, I'm John. Good to be here. This is Bam Bam the Dog. Thank you for having me. Thank you. It's a real honor to be here with you guys today. Thank you. I love you too. Right on. This is awesome. This has been really great and exciting, and uh, I'm really, I'm really honored to be here. Uh, I'm. Uh, I'm enormously proud to be part of the development of this game. It was a pleasure to work with the Ubisoft team. You know, I've had uh, the chance to play some pretty strong, tough men over the years. I've uh, played a deputy fighting zombies, special, <laughs> special forces soldier who lost everything. And now I get to play Cole D. Walker. He's a skilled former special operations soldier with his own sense of responsibility and his own moral code. He knows how things should be run. He loves his brothers, his fellow soldiers, but he is willing to do whatever it takes to complete his mission and take control of Aroa. 
There is no briefing. There's no backup. You will not face a group of bad guys or a criminal organization. You will face an entire army, my army, the wolves. We've got the numbers, we've got the organization, and remember, we trained alongside you, the weaponry of a fully operational special ops detachment. Trust me, there's an unparalleled arsenal of high-tech weapons in Aroa. So if you think you have what it takes, strap on your boots and you get ready to take on the wolves and take on me. See you in Aroa, we'll be waiting. Perfect predators. They have the knowledge of their hunting ground, but we have the element of surprise. They have the technology, but we have the skills to even the odds. and sisters. I mean, I'm gonna play it. I don't need to see more of it to know I'm gonna play it. Did you only have one big thing to talk about? Like, so far, there's only been one big thing. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Being a community developer on Ghost Recon Wildlands and Breakpoint has been an incredible journey for me so far. When we first announced the game, you were very excited. And after discussions of members of our community, I today announce that with our post-launch plan, we will be bringing back our AI teammates for our solo players. <laughs> we knew that already. <laughs> with Ghost Recon Breakpoint, we want to go the extra mile with how we engage with you. So I'm pleased to announce a brand new community program that will allow you to express and share your passion. Welcome to Ghost Recon Delta Company. <laughs> From cosplay to streaming, fan art to forum discussions. However you show your love for Ghost Recon, there is something for you in our five different detachments with lots of content to support you as well as direct discussions with our studio. So head over to our Ghost Recon Breakpoint website to find out more and hear from you soon, Delta Ghosts. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you, Laura. Hello, everyone. Just start talking. The Ghost Recon team has always taken great pride. You're still talking about Ghost Recon? For our games. And that passion is what pushes us to deliver the best Spec Ops experience out there. Behind enemy lines, you will be fighting the most dangerous enemies the Ghosts have ever faced constantly testing your survival skills. 
Yes, we can't wait to welcome you in Ghost Recon Breakpoint on October 4th. And one month before that, our beta will be live on September 5th. It's not a beta if it's a month before the game comes out. It's a demo. Beta. Okay. You can register on our website right now for a chance to participate. Ghost Recon Breakpoint will be live for years to come. We've got your back. Okay. New content, free updates, and many surprises inspired by our community. Yes, yes. Like this one. This sounds like a blood dragon. Is this another Terminator crossover? Didn't we just get Terminator in Gears 5? Will you survive your breakpoint? What was that? All right. See you all out there. What was that? You can't just show red eyes and then cut away. <clears throat> oh no. What are you doing? A dauntless and daring agent. She's all in, all out, always. Oh my gosh. Counterterrorism and rescue veteran. His best offense is his defense. Nomad, covert special ops team leader. A ghost on the battlefield. Cavera. Highly skilled defending operator, lightly armed, massively effective. Sam Fisher, elite covert operative. Oh my Only gosh. Now hunts with a pack. When chaos strikes, rally the specialists. Lead the elite squad. Pre register now. No. Don't do just dance at the end of the conference. You shouldn't do it at all. Really? We're exhausted. I know. But think of everything we've done. It's not for us, or for you, or you. It's for them, the players! We danced, and Sivio and his girlfriend got married. We danced, and our friend Jaden Rodriguez danced for millions, bringing together generations. Right. We danced. And they set world records. Do you remember Carrie? Yes. Of course we do, because we were with her. Tonight. Yes. Dance is why we exist. And I know we're going to have much more of these moments, because dance is a force. It's transcendent. Yes. It unites, and it shows us who we are. That's why Just Dance is more than Just Dance. Whoa! Let's get out there and get ready for what's next. Why?
What's, what's, what's weird is, they don't have to do this. They could just not do this ever again. It could just be a trailer. But instead, they do it. What would GameStop say? This one's for the players or something. Like, even if you're a big Just Dance fan, it's coming to the Wii! It's still coming to the Wii! Oh, and imagine a dancing game on Stadia. That sounds awful. I love that it's coming to the Wii. That's hilarious. All right, you got 10 more minutes. Show me why you have a conference other than just Watch Dogs, because that's been it so far. For Honor time? Oh my gosh. Uh... Stadia is Google's game streaming service slash not really a console but like you can buy like a little thing to plug into your tv that connects to wi-fi and lets you stream their games but you still have to pay for the games and then you have to pay for a high speed service and according to their specifications the internet in north america isn't fast enough to meet their minimum requirements on average. Streaming services are garbage. I will never support streaming services. We didn't believe the old tale. Not until a horror came. Man, this has been an unnecessary conference so far. Alright, something good? Y'all gonna blow me away? Ubisoft yellow. Banana? Rabbits? Banjo Kazooie? Is this Banjo Kazooie? No, this is a horror game. What is this? Is this a Zombie U sequel? It's a real Rainbow Six game, maybe. Hi, I'm Bio Jad, and I'm the lead game designer <laughs> on the next Rainbow Six game.
It's called Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Quarantine. I'm part of a new team in Ubisoft Montreal. She has a very interesting name. BioJade? Create a radically redesigned co-op experience built on the foundations of one of the best shooters of this generation. What Siege Which one? The PvP shooter oh, channel, Siege. We will be to PvE co-op. That's what I want. I want PV. I want, you know, Rainbow Six Vegas vibes. Quarantine will test your tactical skills and survival instincts, holding you and your operators on the razor's edge. It pulls you together as a squad, facing off against an unknown and devastating parasite. You will risk everything Every time you step into quarantine, I'll, I don't need to register for a bit. Start preparing for your next deployment. I can't wait to show you more and have a great E3. Please just show me like something huge, though. At least one thing. Okay, division DLC. <clears throat> the end of it Entertainment. There's no greater reward for me or the team than to see our game come to life and to see our players, our star players, taking tremendous pride in being a part of the division. Yeah! Yeah, yeah! Now, if you haven't had the opportunity to play the division two yet, we would be thrilled to have you join our very passionate community because I'm happy to announce that this week only, between June 13th and June 16th, The Division 2 will be absolutely 100% free for everyone to play. Yeah. And there's no better time to join us as we're about to release the first of our major content updates for our year one journey. A journey beyond Washington, D.C. to save not just a city, but an entire nation. That showed me almost nothing. Thank you. Episode one, coming in July, right around the corner. We deliver to you new main missions and a brand new game experience. Uh -huh. But for the first time, we're taking the fight outside the city. And you'll venture deep into the woodlands to spearhead an attack on a presidential compound as you seek to bring a traitor to justice. The National Zoo is the setting of our next mission where you and your team will hunt down the surviving outcast leader. And this brings us to our final edition of episode one, a place called Kenley Ooh. College, and it's home to an entirely new gameplay experience. I haven't even beaten Division 2 yet. One that will take exploration, investigation, and logic to uncover the fate of a military convoy gone dark. You mean I'll run down hallways episode shooting two, people? Coming this fall. This fall. We'll bring to you the Pentagon. Woo! 
Once an impenetrable fortress, it has fallen to the Black Tusks, and its secrets are about to be thrown out into the open. You must do everything it takes to secure what lies behind the walls of this last castle. You gotta have one big this thing at the, the end, right? This danger you face in episode two. I'm very excited to tell you that our second raid will be coming this fall, bringing back intense eight-player action. Yeah! Watching you tackle the first raid it was awesome, and we cannot wait to see what world records you break this time around. Now, this brings us to our third and final episode of year one. What if Rebirth was not about bringing the world as we know it back to life, but the opposite? Mm -hmm. One man holds that power, and humanity itself is at stake. Agents, it's time to engage in a manhunt. Episode two doesn't get a trailer, but episode three does. It's, it's weird. someone you used to call brother he has left us no other choice if we don't stop him there will be nothing left to save holy shit what about that <laughs> Woo. i can't wait for that it does make me want to play it more i haven't played it in a while last thing as you might know we have been working on a movie. It will be directed no by idea. David Leach, starring Jessica Chastain and Jake Gyllenhaal. Well, today, I'm proud to announce a that trailer? we will be making the Division movie with Netflix. More to come on that in the future. Thank you very much. Cool. Thank you. That means I'll get to watch it. Please just don't be done. Who would... Wow. Hello, everyone. I'm Brenda Panagrosi. I'm Vice President of Platform and Product Management. Ubisoft has been creating worlds for over 30 years. We have the most diverse library of games, and we're about to make it even easier for you to play them. Oh, no. I'm here to announce Ubisoft's new subscription service on PC called Uplay Plus. Okay. You'll get earliest available access to new games, including the premium editions with all their additional content. And you can enjoy the depth <coughs> of our PC catalog that includes over 100 games and growing. <laughs> Uplay Plus will be $14.99 a month. If you sign up today, we'll enable free access for you in September at launch. That's too much. Why is it more than Netflix? I hope that's not the big thing to end it with. I mean... Yeah... I think they overcorrected, and like press conferences in general overcorrected, where... They used to have celebrities, right? And people were like, that's cringy, don't do that. So then the overcorrection was, Let's get our vice president of marketing and let's get our, you know, uh, senior executive of product, I don't know, it's like of uh, third party relations. Like, no, not that either. Get like, have like a PR person 
that you just have for those things. Like, because you've got like a social media team. You've got, you know, people that handle uh, the forums. Have those people come out that already talk to, you know, the fans and stuff on a regular basis. Have them come out and talk during these conferences. She doesn't want to be there. Somebody told her she had to be. Wherever players are, we want to provide access to our games and services. I'm pleased to announce that in 2020, Uplay Plus will be available on Stadia. That's okay. Stadia is the new generation gaming platform where you could play our Stadia games from any device. A special thank you to Phil Harrison and his team. It's so weird to say any device. Because it's like, I can't install Stadia on a PlayStation or an Xbox or a Switch. You mean TV and phone so and computer. Have fun playing. Oh, don't tell me that's the end of the... That's the worst. That's a terrible way to end a conference. Show me something. Please. Oh, the game end with the game that leaked. Perfect. Yeah, roller champions, that's right. Hello, future champions. My name is Stefan, and I'm a proud member of the roller champions team. All right, come on, bring it up. From the get-go, our ambitions with this game were very clear. We wanted to create something new. We wanted to capture the intangible excitement of players preparing for the big game. The hype of team play and competition, along with the craziness of high-speed racing. So we started working on Roller Champions, a skill-based team PvP sports game that is as fun to watch as it is to play. A game in which you, the player, can create your own story as you roll up to glory. But right now, I know how it looks. We showed you a trailer, and I got on stage starting my little speech. That's all well and good, but when will you ever get to play this? How about today? Cool. Is it a beta, or is it out now? That's right. When we're done here, I want you to head over to Uplay on your PC to download a pre-alpha oh, E3 demo of Roller Champions. Play the heck out of it for the next few days. And when you're done, head to the forums to tell us what you thought. <laughs> and you know what? We firmly believe that you will be screaming as loudly as our colleagues did when they first got to play test it back in Montreal. But I can't just leave you with that. So here's a taste of what you should expect once you click that download button. Put your skates on, see you in the arena. That dude's so proud of the scan. It's really cool. I have no interest in it, but she he's like super into this game, you can tell. That he's really happy with it. Just show me gameplay without the cinematic camera angles and stuff. You're not giving me an idea of what it'll be like. There's been some good music in E3 though.
Please don't. Please don't end it with that, though. It's Eve's Gimal! No Nintendo for him this year, I guess. First, I want to say thank you to... <laughs> first, <laughs> thank you! People gotta stop screaming. So first, I want to say thank you to all the Ubisoft teams around the world for your talent and energy. You know, congratulations for another great show. Don't end it yet. So I believe video games have a positive impact on all of us <coughs> and the world around us. At Ubisoft, our intention is to create games that will make you stronger and happier in your life. When you play Ubisoft games, we hope you will spend quality time with family and friends and meet new inspiring people. Learn more about yourself by doing and gain new perspective on the world and help shape it. So to everyone who plays our games, thank you for your love. You push us to always do better and go further. So now, I'm very proud to announce a new project from an exceptional team in Quebec City. Please give a warm upload to Marc Alessi Coté, who is coming to show you a sneak peek of his game. Hey, Marc Thank you so much. Thank you. What the heck kind of hu almost hug was that? Hello, everybody. Over the last 10 years, I've had the chance to be part of an incredible team that has always pushed the limits of Assassin's Creed and shown us different periods of our past. But our imagination has always been bound to the reality of the history books. These past Four years, our minds have lingered on a different aspect of our history, mythology. The stories of the ancient gods and their misadventures have existed through generations of storytellers and audiences and have transformed into tales that we still know and love today. Now, these stories have shaped our dreams, inspiring us to build something new something that transcends the limits that we have always set upon ourselves. Today, I am very proud to have the chance to show you a glimpse, to show you a teaser of this brand new game that we've been working on. I hope you enjoy it. Thank you, and have a great E3. Monsters. That looks actually really cool. <laughs> Here we are. Hello, everybody. Wait, was that it? Let this in. Let this in indeed. Hello, everybody at home. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you had a great show. But this is just the beginning, guys. This is just the beginning. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, I'm done. All right, this will be a quick recap because that was mostly not good. Uh, it started off with Assassin's Creed Symphony. All right. Watch Dogs 3 Legion comes out next March. It looks awesome. 
it has the potential to be the best Assassin's Creed game if it delivers on, you know, all the stuff that they showed and talked about. Uh, let's see. Mythic Quest, a TV show on Apple TV. Don't care. Uh, at that point, we were 30 minutes in and they'd only shown one game. Rainbow Six expansion content, whatever, called Phantom Sight. Cool. Maybe I'll jump back into that. Probably not. Brawlhalla Adventure Time content comes out today. Good for them. Then they had a Ghost Recon segment. And John Bernthal came out and talked. That was cool. He's cool. I hate how scripted it felt. Like whenever Keanu Reeves came out yesterday, he did not seem scripted as much. Even though you could tell it was. He, just, he was a lot more natural with it. Um... Breakpoint Delta fan club thing that they didn't really say what it was about, but it's like if you're a fan and you're gonna stream it sign up here. I'm like no uh, Then they showed elite squad Mobile trash Game with characters from different game, and that's where Sam Fisher is instead of his own game uh, Then they showed just dance for some reason And they talked about a new event coming to for honor called shadows of the Hidokiri. Uh, then they showed Rainbow Six Quarantine is coming early next year. It goes back to classic Rainbow Six where it's all PvE, squads of three. I'm totally down for that. Then they went over the three episodes of uh, Division content coming out. Talked about the Division movie coming to Netflix, which I had no idea about, so that's cool. Then they talked about Uplay Plus, which is too expensive, and that it's coming to Stadia, which doesn't matter. It showed Roller Champions. Looks like it might be fun, I guess. There's a demo of the day. I might check it out. And then they ended like they began with the... They only had two really good things, I think. Gods and Monsters from the creators of Assassin's Creed Odyssey. That looks really cool. That I will probably check out. Like, I'll keep, I'll keep up with that one and with Watch Dogs. Everything else... I already knew about Ghost Recon. I'm, I'm in for Ghost Recon. But that's it. Two more conferences, Square and Nintendo. Let's watch them later.